In this episode, I'll walk you through the basics of growing a tasty indoor garden perfect for all your culinary adventures. Hi everyone, I'm Amanda Roberts. I'm a full-time grad student, part-time content creator, and I'm also known as the Plant Mama. Whether you're topping off your sandwich with sprouts or adding delicious pea shoots to a summer salad, there's nothing better than knowing you grew that finishing touch yourself. Before we get into the weeds of it, here are some things you'll wanna keep in mind. First is time. How much time do you wanna invest? Personally, I love the great indoors, so outdoor gardening is definitely a secondary hobby for me, and I like to keep it super simple. Next is space. Are you hoping to do container gardening, take up some real estate on a windowsill, or grow an indoor herb garden? Another factor to consider is climate or geography. Different areas are classified by hardiness zones, usually a number and a letter to indicate what a particular area's climate is like. This is especially important for outdoor gardening. So you'll wanna look up what your hardiness zone is and what you can grow there. And finally, budget. Your budget will dictate whether you start from seeds or full-grown plants. Full-grown plants tend to be simpler, but also a little bit more expensive. So if you're hoping to have a vast and expansive garden, seeds might be the more cost-effective option. I love to keep it simple, so I prefer the convenience of buying fully grown herbs or tomato plants. I just pick up whichever varieties my local nursery has available. My favorites for first time growers are herbs, green onions, microgreens, and sprouts. Microgreens are all the rage. These are broccoli microgreens. Super easy to grow, quick to harvest, and a beginner's best friend. Here we have some broccoli microgreen seeds. They are super delicious, nutritious, a great source of fiber, and an awesome addition to many recipes. Planting these guys is super easy. You're gonna wanna seed them into a shallow layer of soil. Some folks recommend adding water to the soil to kickstart the growing process. I like to seed my tray super thoroughly to create this kind of seed bed, making sure that I get in the corners. Once you've seeded them, you're going to wanna cover them. Take the lid of the seeding tray and cover the soil, and then cover that with a towel. Now we're gonna wanna let these guys germinate. In a couple of days, you'll start to see signs of germination. As soon as you see that, take off the lid and put them in the windowsill. Broccoli microgreens need lots of sunlight in order to grow. If you wanna level up, introduce a grow light for faster growing. You're gonna start to see these sprout in and around the five day mark, and it can take as long as three weeks to see them fully grown. These guys are not quite fully grown, but they're almost there. They're also super easy to harvest. Once they're ready, take some sharp scissors and cut right at the base close to the soil. Some more great options for microgreens are pea shoots and wheatgrass. Sprouts are so easy and fast to grow. There are a couple options for growing sprouts. The first is a sprouting tower. This terracotta tower is great if you're short on space and looking to grow variety because you have multiple layers of sprouts. And here is a classic mason jar from a sprouting kit. It comes with a mesh strainer on top to make rinsing and draining the sprouts a breeze. These sprouting kits are super common, super accessible, and come in a wide variety. I love a DIY budget-friendly option. I love using a mason jar with some cheesecloth on top secured with an elastic. Most seed companies have super clear instructions on the back of the packet, but in general, seeds are soaked, rinsed, and then drained. If you're sprouting in a jar, you're gonna wanna rinse them two to three times a day, and each time, turn the jar over in a bowl to let them rest and drain. If you're using a terracotta sprouting tower, you're gonna wanna mist them two to three times a day. These are some cute alfalfa seeds. I love them because they're ready to harvest in three to five days. To get these started, take a teaspoon of them and let them soak in water in a sterile jar. The length of soaking time really varies based on the size of the seed. Smaller seeds get soaked for about 10 minutes, and for your larger seeds, they're gonna soak for eight hours and potentially overnight. Once you've got your draining and rinsing schedule, you're gonna wanna keep these out of direct sunlight. Because of the moisture associated with the sprouting process, you're gonna wanna be super mindful of mold. If you notice any white cobweb-like structures, you're gonna wanna toss them, sanitize your jars, and start over. There's really no recovery from mold. Speaking of veggies, let's talk green onions and how you can propagate them. When you get your green onions from the grocery store, don't throw out the white bottoms. 
Cut the green onions an inch or two above their little roots and keep the bottoms. You can use the green tops in some yummy dish. You might want to throw these bottoms into the composter, but don't. Hang on to them because we can propagate them. Propagating green onions really is as easy as putting these little guys in a mason jar of water. You're just gonna wanna top up the water every other day. Here are some green onions that have been growing for a week and a half and some that have been growing for two weeks. The two week old green onions have roots that are a little bit more developed. As for when you wanna harvest and prune them, you're really gonna wait until they're about as long as they are when you get them from the store. In the summer, I can't get enough cherry tomatoes. I love putting them on a salad, roasted, in a pasta, you name it. I know some folks like to start from scratch and plant seeds in the early spring, but personally, I like to keep it super simple and pick up seedlings from my local nursery. Cherry tomatoes are super versatile. You can plant them right in the ground or in a pot. You'll wanna make sure that they have access to at least six hours of sunlight. Tomatoes are broken up into two categories, determinate and indeterminate. Determinate tomatoes ripen all at once, produce for a short period of time, and then stop producing. Indeterminate tomatoes require more care because they can grow out of control. That's why it's super important to choose your variety of tomatoes. To pot or not to pot? That seems to be the question when it comes to cherry tomatoes. Some sources recommend keeping your tomatoes in pots because then they tend to be weed free, require less fertilizer and less water. The variety of tomato will determine the size of your pot. If you're choosing the pot route, you'll wanna find a pot that is at least a foot deep and remember to use good quality soil. If you wanna leave these guys outside throughout a hot summer, be sure to water them every day. If you're keeping them inside, you can get away with every other day. Voila, an indoor garden to take your culinary skills to the next level. For more ways to explore the great indoors, check out the Plant Mama Hub at hgtv.ca.